Have you or are you thinking of purchasing a cheap incubator from eBay that gives you a low yield of chicks? Then come along with me as I do a review on this much better system. Let's go. Hey guys, Musa here from Quantum Home Improvements and Solutions. Welcome back to the channel. So today I'm very excited. I've been waiting a long time for this and I'm finally going to do a review on the Italian made Barotto incubator. And so Barotto have three types in this range. So they've got the Real 12, the Real 24 and the Real 49. And this particular one is the Real 49. And so the 49 represents how many eggs it can take. And so it can take large eggs, including turkeys, geese, ducks, chickens, but it can also take small bird or quail eggs, in actual fact, 196 of them, which is fantastic. Uh, so last year I made a video, a comprehensive video, A to Z, on how to breed chicks and all the problems you might have and how to overcome them but I used a cheap eBay incubator and I found using a digital thermometer that it actually was fluctuating temperature quite dramatically. And so the embryo would form and the chick would get to about six to eight days, but then the embryo would die. So the yield would be much less because the fluctuation of temperature is no good for the chicks. I'm gonna put a link below of that video that I made, which as I said, was very comprehensive and should help you. And so I'm also gonna put a link for Barotto uh, and where I purchased it from, which is dial a chick. So I do wipe the eggs down with hydrogen peroxide and this is to reduce the bacteria on the eggs. So chickens naturally have a bacteria, a different strains of salmonella and, um, and it can actually cause the eggs to, uh, to fail and also they can explode in the incubator. So you'd be really careful to make sure that those eggs are clean. So when you are collecting the eggs, make sure there's not too much poo on there because the poo itself is probably the biggest danger you can have. And you've got to also make sure that your chickens are healthy. So the way you do that is making sure that you uh, give them a good environment, that they've got clean water all the time. Now I don't put dra uh, drip trays uh, for my chickens for drinking. I actually put a drip system. So I've done a video on that and I will put that video link as well below. That will help the chickens to be healthy and that means the eggs will also be healthy. All right, so I just put some hydrogen peroxide in this bowl. Each carton has different breeds of chickens. Two of them are actually Plymouth Rocks, so Bard Rocks. Uh, I love my Bard Rocks, they're beautiful birds. And I've got about 24 Bard Rock eggs, which is fantastic. It's one I wanna breed the most. So you can have a little bit of poo on the eggs, but not a great deal. Okay, so I'll take the top off. Just put that out of the way. Okay, so now we put the tilt tray in position. And so the metal tilter also slides into position. So with these eggs, I do write the breed that I've got. So that's PR, Plymouth Rocks, and I'll put the date that I actually collected the egg. So I do wipe these eggs down twice. So I'll use a different rag for the second time. Okay, so when I put them in the incubator, I do turn them this way. So with the round section on top. So some eggs will look very similar, but you can see the point if you look hard enough. So there the point is here, the round section's there. So just place that in. So when you're collecting your eggs, uh, it's advised that you collect your eggs uh, up to 10 days. Anything after that has a much less a success rate. I tend to collect my eggs only up to seven days usually, um, but at the moment, I've got a bit of a problem with my chickens. So uh, they've not been laying much and it is uh, still a little cold. So um, I've now collected up to 10 days. So I'm expecting this to be a lower yield of fertilized eggs. So remember also when you are collecting your eggs that you need to do a minimum collection of three times a day because the eggs need to stay at a temperature of roughly 15 degree Celsius and while you're collecting. So if the chicks are gonna sit on the eggs, that will fail the embryo. The embryo will start and then uh, you'll put in a cool spot for a few days and the embryo will die. But if it's a hot day, that'll also trigger the embryo to start. So you've got to make sure that you collect your eggs at least minimum three times a day. It is actually recommended to collect them five times a day. So you incubate your eggs for 21 days um, and the first 18 days sits on this tilt tray. So this Barotto is an automatic tilt tray um, and it's a very slow moving. You don't have to adjust uh, how many times you want it to tilt. 
it just automatically will tilt every hour will go a full cycle and you won't see it turning very fast it just slowly tilts over the hour so now i'll put in my leg horns so my leg horns have not been laying properly at all they usually are my best layers uh, and unfortunately they have slowed down completely. So in a 10 day period, I was only able to get 12 eggs, which is not good. I'm also a little concerned about my Plymouth Rock eggs because I have one hen that's very broody and she's been sitting on these eggs a fair amount. So I'm just hoping that I got them in time. So don't be too concerned that you're putting a chemical on here. Uh, you'll find that your yield will be much greater and they'll be healthier chicks. It's very heartbreaking having chicks hatch and then die a couple of days later because they're sick. Um, so we're trying to make these chicks as healthy as possible uh, to give them the best chance of survival. So this is a crossbreed I'm doing and my crossbreed Plymouth Rock Leghorn is a beautiful bird. I love him. He looks fantastic. Very big, very strong, but unfortunately he's a bit feisty and um, he had a run in with my Leghorn through the chicken cage uh, they're separated, but he still managed to have a running with him and uh, ultimately, unfortunately, he killed my leghorn rooster. So I had to borrow uh, a leghorn that I gave to a friend of mine back uh, a couple of years ago and he's a beautiful looking leghorn rooster. So I'm a little worried about the fertility of the leghorn eggs, but the cross Plymouth Rock leghorns should be spot on. So this is the first incubation I've done in a long while that the eggs are over seven days. So I'm really not sure how I'm gonna go with this. Um, but the success will be not which eggs are fertile, but which ones go from an embryo to a full hatched chick. And that's what I judge it on. Last one, 49 eggs, beautiful. Okay, so I'll give it a second coat. Just remember to use a clean rag change it over. All right, so just coming down to the last few. Okay, so it's all done. So with this, um, you just put the heat element, which is the lid on top. Now it does have its separate power. Uh, so the tilt has its own power and the lid has its own power. So make sure that sits in properly. So you have two windows here and it's enough for you to see what's happening inside. And so this insulates really, really well. But I've got to say that you've got to keep this incubator in a room roughly about 20 degree. It can be a little warmer or colder, but it has to be consistent temperature. So when you're incubating, uh, don't put it in a room where it has a draft or in a garage where the temperature fluctuates a lot during the night and the day. Okay, so now I'll just turn the power on. So the temperature should be around 37.5 degrees Celsius for the first 18 days as they're on the tilter. On the 18th day, you take the eggs off the tilter and you put them on this tray. So the tray will sit down and so that's where the eggs will hatch on this. And so you also drop your temperature on the 18th day to 37 degree. Now please remember that you do not open this incubator unless you have to. So this here, the water is put in to uh, increase the humidity from the outside. And there's two trays here. So for the first 18 days, you just keep one tray full. So I'll do that now. So now you'll see the temperature slowly rising. It's sitting at 21.3 degrees Celsius at the moment, uh, and that'll slowly climb. So there's only three times you'll open this lid. Okay, the first time will be when you candle it, which is anywhere from six to eight days. Now, Barotto recommend eight days. I usually do six. In this case here, I'm actually, for the first time, I'm gonna candle on the seventh day. So the next time you'll do it on the 18th day, when you take them off the tilt tray, onto the tray. And then the third time will be after the chicks are hatching. So if you do open the lid too many times, what will happen is you'll dry out the egg. Now the egg itself has two membranes and the membrane feeds through and oxygen feeds through from the outside. So if you do open and close it, you're gonna reduce the amount of humidity in there and that'll actually cause the membranes to stick together. And then the chick will not be able to rotate in the egg as it's hatching and peck the top of the egg off. Okay, so it took around about 20, 30 minutes but it's gone to the default setting, which is 37.7. Uh, so if you want to reduce that down, you just uh, touch that and then the temperature will drop. Uh, and if you want to do the same to go up, 
but I'm gonna leave it on 37.7. So one thing to note when you first get the incubator that you need to run it for a few hours. Uh, I ran it for 24 hours. I think it recommends for at least two hours. Now one thing to note, um, this is a really good incubator, but what it does not have is an indicator on how many days that you've been incubating for. So you need to write down the date that you start, so you know your days, you know when you're gonna candle, and you know the day that when you're gonna take them off the tray, and you know the day that the chicks are expected to hatch. It's now the seventh day, and it's time to candle the eggs. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how many of these fertilized eggs have formed into a proper embryo. So the first thing I need to do is slowly remove this lid and place it down gently. Now the reason is because I'm gonna keep the heater on so when I do put the lid back on, it's gonna warm those eggs up quickly. So then I'm gonna turn the light off and with this torch, I will place it on top of the eggs to see if I can see the vessels and also possibly the embryo. Now if I can't see them, I will pick it up and check around all the way around to make sure 100%. So if it's totally clear, you know that there's no embryo in there and it's best to take that out because if that has bacteria, it will form after 21 days and possibly explode. And if it does explode, it will infect all the other eggs and we don't want that. And the reason I'm not gonna take the eggs off the tilt tray uh, purposely because I don't want to shake the egg too much because if you do shake it, the vessels can dislodge from the embryo and that'll also cause them to die. You can see, I don't know if you can see in the camera there, but that's got vessels, that's got vessels, and the same. That's pretty good, that's pretty good. Looking good so far. Okay, the whole seven are good. That's good, that's good. Very good, that's good. That one there is no good. So, just to show you that, put the light under it, there is no vessels at all. It's empty completely. So I'll just take that out. No good. And this is where I was concerned that the hen was sitting on the eggs for too long, but that's definitely not good. Okay, so we've got one here. I'll just show you. So you can see the vessels just there on the egg. Look at that. Hopefully you can see that on camera. Okay, so I've put the lid back on pretty quickly to keep those eggs warm, and it's back to 37.7 degrees Celsius. So out of the 49 eggs, we had 35 that had formed into an embryo, which is not too bad, but it confirms that I had problems with the Plymouth Rock and also with the Leghorn. 10 of the Plymouth Rock eggs did not form into an embryo, which is a little disappointing. Okay, so now we'll leave it until the 18th day. But don't forget, keep topping up your water. There is a danger there that you do forget, and I did. Um, so you've got to check it on a daily basis. You've got to keep that humidity up. It's now the 18th day, and in three days time, the chicks are gonna start hatching. And we're gonna take them now off the tilting tray and place them on this flat tray. So before I do that, I'm gonna candle the eggs one more time to make sure that the chicks have developed and if they haven't, I will take them out and then I'll then place them on this tray. So we've got to do this fairly quickly, but you've got to make sure that you don't disturb the eggs too much. Uh, that's looking good. Beautiful. And there we are there, look at that. You can see the vessels and you can see the egg is fairly full. So the chick has formed beautifully in that. That one there has not developed. Okay, so you can see here. It did start, but it died off. So I'll get rid of that one. There we go. Okay, we'll just place the flat tray in. So this is where the water compartments are. Now, I so said there's a little section there that sticks out. That needs to sit where the water tray is. And the reason being, so the chicks won't fall through these little holes here. So now I'll just quickly place the eggs on the tray, but very gently. I need to quickly hurry and put this lid back on. After candling the second time, it was good to see that only one egg failed this time, which unfortunately was another Plymouth Rock. So now I'm down to 34 eggs. So I'm gonna be really eager to see which chicks hatch in three days time. So now being 
the 18th day, we reduced the temperature down to 37. But on the instructions for the Barotto, they say 37.2. Now again, I'm gonna follow their instructions because this is their incubator. And so they know something more than I do. I'm gonna trust that they are doing the right thing. So I'm gonna put it on 37.2. Generally, the egg should be at 37 after the 18th day. Now, we need to fill up both these sections, okay? So both these chambers will need to have water. So I've already put some water in here. I'll just put a little bit more. And this one here, you fill up totally. So this Barado incubator is performing really well compared to the cheap eBay incubator. So, so far the eggs are developing really well. There was a couple of iffies there, so some that I thought maybe should go out. I left them in there just in case they're just a slow forming chick and that does happen sometimes. And so in three days time, these chicks will start to hatch on the 21st day. But don't be surprised, they actually can start hatching on the 20th day. And there's a couple there that look full in the egg then they might actually start earlier. Just don't open the incubator, leave it. You need to keep the humidity up to around 80%. Okay, so it's now coming up to the 22nd day and we've got a heap of chicks in here. Very good news. So we had out of 34 eggs, we had 25 hatch. Unfortunately, a couple didn't make it, but still 25 out of 34 gives a high hatch rate, which is around about 75%. So the Barada incubator definitely works much better than the cheap eBay incubator. So on the 20th day, the chicks started to poke through, and by the morning of the 21st day, we had a few chicks in the incubator. So the chicks can stay in the incubator for up to three days um, because they consume that last bit of that yolk in the sack, and that gives them enough energy for three days or up to three days now there's a couple of chicks that are not doing that great still and I'm going to be releasing a video hopefully in the near future of how to raise chicks and I'll show you some of those techniques so as predicted the crossbreed eggs were probably the most successful so the Plymouth Rock eggs wasn't so successful due to the hen sitting on the eggs so unfortunately uh, she sat on for too long and started the embryo to uh, form before I got to it so that's a bit of a problem. And also changing the rooster over uh, meant that some of those hens uh, for the leghorns were not fertilized. But my favorite chick of all is the crossbreed. Look at that. I love him. Look at the color on that. Beautiful. They're very healthy looking chicks. So this real 49 Barotto incubator is brilliant. Compared to the eBay incubator, it's far greater. So when I did my last incubation with the eBay incubator, um, I had 30 fertilized and only 14 hatched, which is only about 47%, so just under 50%. And here we've got close to 75%. So the only thing you've got to take note with this incubator, that it doesn't have the day count, and you've got to make sure that you write in the diary and make sure of your day. So the, the sixth to eighth day, the 18th day, and then you know your hatch day. So you make sure that you fill up your water for the humidity level uh, at the appropriate time. I almost forgot to mention that I will put a link below of a live chat we did with Joe and Dave and Sal Min. So we, we talked a lot about uh, you know, the, the things you can do uh, if you have problems uh, and also uh, some of the things you need to watch out for. So uh, you'll find that uh, live chat should be helpful. I'll also put a link below for the Barotto incubator and also for Dialer Chick where I bought the Barotto incubator from. So that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. And if you have any comments, please leave them below and I will get back to you. And I'd ask if you please consider to subscribe, hit the like button and share this video and there's many more to come. Thanks guys.